everyone. Um, okay, so who has seen the, these statements? To succeed in life, you must be the best in the class. Have a lot of you experienced that? To succeed in life, you must go to university. And to succeed in life, you must be Mr. and Miss Poplar. This is the message that you get from grandparents, parents, and then to yourself. I had this from an early age from my parents. I'm the CEO and founder of Ginger Camel and the host of Your, Un Your, Your Onion podcast show. I'm getting tongue twisted here as well. Um, I don't know if a lot of you have seen this. Uh, this is generally the image that uh, people uh, have of a successful person. Uh, generally, people see a successful person um, at the, of the image of the iceberg, but they never see the hard work that goes into uh, someone's career, which is below the water. I generally, when I see this image, I see myself sitting on top there, maybe not on the spike, but maybe on one of the flat bits. Um, and the reason why you know, I see myself there is because I believe in meditation. I don't know if a lot of you uh, believe in meditation, but I'm a firm believer in meditation, and I believe that's what's helped me to where I am today. Uh, I've got a picture of this guy. I don't think I'm that hairy, and uh, that's the only person that I could find uh, to show you someone meditating on ice. Um, also, I like to keep healthy, a healthy body, keeps a healthy mind, uh, and gives you a happy life. I would like to show you a video um, that gives you a brief introduction about myself. This was a promo video that I did uh, on my fifth anniversary for my company, Ginger Camel, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. I stand before you with my hands open wide and a story to tell if you give me your time. I have ridden the ginger camel afar, traversing the desert and guided by stars. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. For the last five years, I have traded in quality, film, animation, and of course, photography. Creative ideas that clients behold from the best team in Qatar, if I may be so bold. Who makes these bloody words up? A creative Croatian with an eye for a shot. An English gent who makes words say a lot. An Indian man, an editing gangster. Town guy from England. Picture in hand. <laughs> a Moroccan lady that makes production and art. And a team that's more than the sum of its parts. Where there is balance, there is of course peace. Where there is peace, there are dreams. Your dreams can come true with the creativity of the Ginger Camel team. That was nice. Let's just, okay. let's just okay. run and do another one. Keep okay. rolling. Keep rolling. Thank you. So when I was younger, I was into poetry, and uh, what I didn't realize when I was younger, also I used to write uh, music uh, and um, songs, but I didn't realize at the time that poetry was a way of me going deep, and also it was a kind of meditation as well, but I didn't realize that, that at the time. Um, so going back to the uh, iceberg, and just looking at the underbelly of the iceberg, what layers of wisdom have I learned? What layers of failures and triumphs have taught me to break through the cold water and into the sunshine of success? One thing I've learned running a company is to step out of your comfort zone. And I suppose this is one of those stepping out of your comfort zone is actually to appear on a TED Talk. So. That's one thing that uh, I've learned very much is basically when you're running your own company, you have to step out of your comfort zone because you're never going to get anywhere. Uh, the other thing is to be focused and determined. At school, I suffered from dyslexia uh, at the, from the age of seven. Uh, that's me on the left um, reading a comic. Uh, but I got over that. I learned how to deal with dyslexia and learn techniques of to get over. And then um, 
this is me uh, further along at school. Now you can see where the uh, name Ginger Camel came from with the ginger hair. Um, then I went to uh, university. Um, now, yeah. When you leave school, then you leave, generally you leave home. So then you go a little bit wild. So that's why the crazy hair. Um, so yes, I wanted to go into music. I wanted to go into recording studios, so I thought I'd go and learn, learn um, on a course to learn recording. Uh, but I wasn't able to do that. And I ended up doing a TV studio engineering course um, which I didn't want to do, but I, I passed it because I wanted to please my parents. Um, so this is me on my graduation day. They were very proud. So I ended up t doing TV studio engineering, and um, yeah, then I went into... Um, oh, then, sorry. So basically, I went into TV studio engineering, but uh, this, these are the guys that I basically... Uh, interviewed on my podcast, Your Onion, where I've been interviewing business people um, about their lives. And it's fascinating, because every time I talk to them, they've started on a career, or they've started education and a career um, that was dictated by their education and their parents. And then later on in life, they've had that light bulb moment, and they've realized that this isn't what they want to do, and they, they want to um, follow their passion. And nearly every single one of these guys who are running their own companies uh, has done that. And I feel proud uh, to basically tell their stories and to interview these guys. Um, this is a promo just for my uh, Your Onion. This is my old uh, uh, presentation, but let's play it. <laughs> So yes, again, stepping out of your comfort zone and doing a video like that. Um, my suit got thrown in the bin because my wife thought when I had my suit wet, she thought it was rubbish and she threw it in the bin. Um, and it was made for the dry, dry cleaners. Anyway, so I did 20 years. So I studied in TV engineering and I spent 20 years doing a job that I wasn't really into, but I had a good time. I worked for... Uh, companies such as Orbit, which is now OSN, I work for ITV, and I work for Sky Television. 20 years, um, and then I had enough. I thought, no, I can't do this anymore. And maybe it tied in with uh, me basically turning, it, turning the age, ripe old age of 40. Maybe it was due to me getting divorced, and maybe it was when I was getting into meditation that I thought, no, enough's enough. So I decided to study holistic masseur, ma holistic massage. Complete change. Um, and it's amazing. When you, when you make that decision and you make the switch, it's amazing how things change in your life. It's like you set, a, uh, set something in motion. Um, and once I decided to change my career and go into holistic massage, I met my second wife. And she got a job offer in um, Qatar with Al Jazeera, um, and I decided to follow her. So then I was going to set up a private massage in our villa, but then I didn't realize that it was illegal to do that. You had to be registered under a spa. So then I did some freelance work at Al Jazeera, and then that led on to me basically uh, meeting two editors that basically introduced me to video production, and then through them, I joined a production company, and we built a company up from scratch to a very successful company. Then I got introduced to a uh, French guy who basically wanted to set up the first animation house here in Qatar. So then we set up a company called Limelight Productions. We went on um, to do a very successful um, production for the Emir, and then we went bankrupt. 
And once we went bankrupt, my partner basically got a job and I was left with nothing. And after that, I was approached by a friend of mine and he said, look, I really believe in what you do. I want to invest in you. And I started Ginger Camel. It's seven years on now. Ginger Camel has won. This is one of our prestigious awards, which we won in 2014. Is the Cannes Award. That's my wife and myself and my producer, Najwa. Um, and then I was awarded the QBBF Businessman of the Year Award in 2016. Thank you. So, going back to the iceberg, so remember that everything you do in life is building your iceberg to finally break the water of success. Nothing you do is ever wasted, believe me, in regards to experience and learning. And then going back to um, succeed in life, my final thought is basically to succeed in life, you don't need to be the best in the class. You have to find your passion. To succeed in life, you don't need to go to university. You have to embrace the university of life. And to succeed in life, you don't need to be Mr. and Mrs. Poplar. That's a short-term gain. Long-term, you need to be the person that listens, who cares, who stands up for what is right, and to lead by example. Thank you.